Hello and welcome to our first webinar of 2022. Um, nice to see you all. Thanks for joining us today. Um, and as you will know, uh, today's webinar is all about teams. So um, the past we've done uh, a couple of Teams webinars before. We always want to kind of keep you guys up to date with what is new in Teams. Um, and because of that, it's not just me and Jig here with you today because um, we're just the marketing guys. We've got our very own Microsoft expert and digital transformation consultant, Nick Ellis. So thanks for joining us, Nick. Hello. Sorry, I had to quickly unmute myself. Sorry, I caught you by surprise. Uh, yes, hello. Are you well? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you. And how are you doing? Are you excited about Teams webinar? Yeah, so there's a lot going on at the moment. There's a lot, uh, a lot of change. And it's funny, so I was thinking the other day, so the very first webinar that we did, which was obviously a response to lockdown, which would have been in March 2020, so just nearly two years ago, was what's new in Teams and how you can use Teams <laughs> with uh, with lockdown. I don't think we probably anticipated then that we'd still be, <laughs> still be having this conversation two years later. We've gone full uh, circle. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it, it's 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 been an interesting couple of years, isn't it? We, you know, um, I've you got a lot more that. books for obvious reasons involving not going anywhere. So um, yeah, the, uh, the a, a lot has changed. So people came on two years ago and they went, "This is okay. This is good," you know, and it, it means we can do business in 2020 in a way that had the same situation arisen in say 2000, we wouldn't have been able. We'd all just gone well. That's the economy completely down the hole then. So um, you know, it was good, but also then because of the sudden explosion of people that are using it, and I saw um, the uh, the other day, 270 million different users logged on to a Teams meeting in December. Uh, obviously, when I say to a team's meeting, I don't mean yeah, a, not, not the same not one. Same one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, there are 270 million different active users on uh, using Teams meetings at the moment, um, and using Teams for chat and what have you. And that's December numbers. We haven't had January's numbers yet, but because of that, and people have said, well, that's good, it's not quite great. And I think if we're honest, uh, Microsoft, like the rest of the world, to be fair to Microsoft, uh, they were slightly caught on the back foot um, and they had a, a rollout plan I think at the time I seem to remember January 2020 they had about 80 million users which is now 250 million 270 million sorry so they have grown by to the mass whatever that is so 250 million that they've added something like that so no it isn't 190 whatever it is anyway it's a lot um, <laughs> so um, uh, and, and those people have generated Oh, could it do this? Could it do that? Oh, yeah, this would be a nice idea. And some of the stuff that Microsoft were doing anyway, they compressed into a much shorter timeline than they originally planned. And as a response, so uh, Tess, you and I were looking yesterday at the uh, at the team's development roadmap because that's the kind of fun happening people that we are. Um, that um, I think we suggested something like 300 odd pieces of functionality that have been rolled out over the last two or three months. Um, you'll be pleased to hear those of you watching. I'm not going to tell you about all 300 of them. Uh, there's another 62 that are planned for release in the next two months. Um, you know, so there's a lot going on. Um, and some of that, I should say, is pretty nerdy background stuff that you're not really going to care about. It's to do with changing encryption, improving video codecs and some fairly nerdy stuff. So what we're going to focus on here is the, the bits that you can see, feel, experience, um, and that are going to make a, a material difference to your day. Another thing that's happened, I will just draw attention. Sorry, I've kind of gone straight into it. I don't know if you had questions that you wanted to lead in with, Tess, or you're okay with me just rambling. No, no, I think this is how we wanted to do it. Like, let's get straight into it. Um, so one of the big changes in those two years has been a thing called liquid interface. 
um, which sounds like an excuse to get drunk at lunchtime. Let's go have a liquid interface. It's <laughs> yeah, <not>. it does. <laughs> um, it's um, basically they tidied up the design. It's, it's difficult to remember now, but two years ago it was it was a bit clunky. It wasn't as as nice. So they tidied up the design. They tidied up the user interface um, and brought in the standard um, icons that just it's all just a bit nicer and stuff. That was one of the big ones. That was last year. What we're looking at today is the meetings uh, experience. They use the word experience a lot. The meetings experience, you know, creating meetings, running meetings, things you can do in a meeting that you couldn't do previously, things you could do previously that you can now do better. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about Viva, uh, Viva Las Vegas, um, or Viva Forever, depending on your preference. Um, we're particularly going to look at insights and learning now I should say I'm going to flag up up front insights depends on there being quite a lot of information for it to have insights about we're using a test environment so I'm kind of going to show you where it is and then suggest that you go and have a look for yourself in your own environment because we haven't got a lot of data for it to produce insights about because it's a test environment and of course I can't show you my own one you know for obvious reasons <laughs> so um, the learning there's a bit more to talk about there uh, and then we're going to talk about some improvements in chat as well. We said overlaps a bit with the Viva piece. So uh, when you're having, you know, your one-to-one your -one chat. So one of the things I've noticed, one of the trends that I've noticed over the last uh, couple of years is two years ago, everybody was talking about structured teams and channels. And that was the way everybody was thinking about teams. Now it's much more about individual one to one chats or small group chats. The structured teams seem to be falling away in terms of what people prioritize. Um, they're still there. They're still valuable. But so when I talk to people, chat, video calling, meetings, that's what people are focused on more than the structured team bit, which I think. I think sometimes and without, you know, talking out of turn to uh, on teams, and um, sometimes those teams can get a bit overwhelming because you kind of create so many of them um, and 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 you kind of have to be tagged in them by name to maybe necessarily see a notification or be flagged to it. Whereas if you're kind of going back and forth in a chat, it's just kind of a bit quicker. So they're, they're great. They obviously they have their place, but I think people are wanting to kind of have that more I mean, I barely even use email anymore. I will just set up a Teams chat if I want to ask several people to approve a particular, you know, like for instance, we've just done some editorial. So rather than sending that, so we're kind of going back and forth on email, I've been able to share it within the chat um, and get feedback that way. Yeah, I think so. And I think what I'll do, I'll, I'll go live with a, a share my desktop if I can. Um, but yes, while we're doing that, I, I completely agree. I think um, <clears throat> what I often say to people, including, I have to say, our own colleagues, uh, so why have you just emailed me this? this? I don't understand. Why are we sending an email internally? Um, there's a there's also a share to Teams button. This isn't on the agenda, but let's let's get it out while we think about it. The, um, the share to Teams button in Outlook now. So when you receive an email, you're looking at an email and you think, oh, you know, if I get an email, I think, oh, I need to talk to um, Tess and Jig about this. I can uh, I can press that share to Teams button. It says, who do you want to share to? Tess and Jig, go, and then I can have a conversation about that email, but in Teams. Um, which for me makes much more sense. It's basically Teams is for your internal conversations, Outlook is for your external conversations. And increasingly, actually, even that line is being blurred. I have a number of customers, at least one of whom I think is on this webinar, hello, uh, who, um, who I talk to using Teams more than I email. Spoke to her on Teams this morning to give an update on a project, that kind of thing. So it, even that line is being blurred now. So I would say probably Outlook for formal communications, Teams for less formal and ongoing communication. Mm. Does that make sense? Definitely. Um, and there are actually one of the developments that I wasn't going to talk about is to permanently pair up businesses. So if you've got, um, this is coming I think in about April, May time, that you'll be able to say, I don't know, select technology, I've got a permanent 
uh, chat, need to chat with everybody at the BBC. It's unlikely that we'll get away <laughs> with that one, but you know, um, and you can actually connect the two tenants together and, and open that bridge so you're not having to sort of search for people all the time and, and, and they'll be able to talk business to business, uh, everybody to everybody. Um, so that's an improvement that is coming, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. What we're here to talk about today is meetings, Viva, chat, and a little bit on the coming soon stuff. So meetings, what has changed? And as I said, this is a, a test environment, which is why it's all pink at the top to remind me that I'm in the test environment. Um, and we're using the web version of Teams. Makes no material difference, really. The Teams fundamentally is itself just a very particularly structured web browser. So um, the experience is all the same. So first thing when you're planning a meeting is you have to create it. You have to put it in someone's diary. Now, uh, in this environment, I'm a man called Richard Thompson. Uh, Tess, I believe you're called Caroline. That's right. And, and Jig, today, Jig, you shall be Adrian. I am right? Adrian. I am Adrian. Marvellous. Uh, it's like um, stars in their eyes. Um, <laughs> office workers in their eyes. So yeah. uh, I'm going to create a meeting between the three of us tomorrow afternoon at uh, two o'clock just by dragging the space over the calendar there. And I'm going to say, uh, let's call it a weekly roundup. I'm going to add some required attendees. This is will all be very, very familiar. I'm not claiming this is the new stuff. Well, don't don't leave. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. um, so, <laughs> There's a, a few things that we can do now that we didn't have available to us before. At this stage, there's really only uh, three that I want to draw your attention to, one of which actually is a new, but I think it just gets underused. So we have this scheduling assistant. Uh, so this is very like the scheduling assistant in Outlook, if you've ever used that. So it will show you where people are available. And it will even if you've got access to that information, show you what they are in that's making them unavailable. So if it's got like, yeah, oh, that's a, an internal meeting and this is a customer meeting. Well, fine, I can overwrite that. But if it's, you know, that kind of thing, so you can see when people are available. Um, you can specify response options. So you can say, do I do I actually want requests? Am I willing to allow them to forward it? So I could turn that off now and say, well, I'm inviting Caroline and Adrian. They don't get to deputize somebody else. They don't get to add people to the team. You know, normally you get a meeting invite. You can forward it on to somebody else and say, mm, yeah. can you come as well or can you go instead? This is kind of, you know, so if you're having a confidential meeting, maybe an HR meeting or a board meeting or something like that, you can turn off the forwarding. And the request responses, so that if you turn that off, we just, I'm just assuming these people are coming. Uh, I don't need a response. I'm kind of forcing it to be careful about that. Maybe only do that if you're the MD, um, but you can kind of force it into people's calendars if you want. Um, the other one that's on here, this I think is quite interesting, require registration. So what this does is it turns your ordinary meeting in your calendar into a webinar such as uh -huh. this. So if you have, I mean, we set ours up through uh dynamics and there's lots of integration with marketing workflows and stuff, but say you wanted to just do a uh, an all company meeting or you wanted to uh, offer it externally. So you've got this for people in your org or for everyone. So if I do a for everyone, you see it has a little think about it. It says, ah, OK, now I need this to be a webinar. So it's added this section in the top. And then if I click on view a registration form here, uh, you can see I then get to um, create a registration form, give it a title, which doesn't have to be the same as the uh, the meeting title. And I can add custom fields as well. So if I wanted to say, uh, I don't know, uh, your color, you know, whatever question you want and make it required and so on, you can add as many of those as you like. And that allows people to register um, for that uh, externally. Well, which is much easier because I think Teams before you couldn't really set up webinars very easily. Not very easily. No, they did start to roll it out last year um, mm. and the, initially the registration was a bit clunky and a bit horrible. It's now quite nice. So I'm, I'm suggesting you know, this is something that people might want to think about doing. You can also add information about speakers. Now, I've done one of these uh, for 
um, an all company update, which is on the 14th. So I'll briefly get that calendar about, oh no, I won't just have a word for it. On the 14th of February from nine till 10, an all company update. And you can see you can put speaker information in there. So Richard and Caroline and Adrian and a bit of information about who they are and so on. I've added a custom like a drop down list registration and so on. Um, now, this one I set as a your organization only and then for demonstration purposes, I attempted to go to that uh, in the browser, which is logged in with my Select Technology account and it's gone. That doesn't exist, yeah. You're not, you're not in the, the right business, so you don't get to look at that. But you have to be um, really careful then about when you're setting this up, if you want it to be for external persons, make yes. sure you click that box. Make sure you get it right, yes. It's a drop down um, and you've got, but it, it can only be one of those. So you, you can, everybody, which obviously would include your business or limited or you don't want it, it's just an ordinary meeting, right? So um, what I need to do uh, is I'm going to close that. Sorry, I slightly forgot where I was there. I'm going to close that. Would you like or on your screen? <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so. Nick, Nick, if when you sent the uh, request for that registration, yeah, and you've bun got a whole bunch of people on there, would everybody be able to see who's other other people's email addresses, or is it like you know? Ah, oh, yes. Oh, well, speak to so, that individually. Absolutely. So it's actually just copy registration link. So it doesn't send them for you. You copy the registration link. You send them out. So oh, well, that's okay. that's that's your own marketing email. Yeah. Depends how you send it would be the uh, the answer. Okay. Because you're not you're not adding invitees here. You're just saying I'm going to create this and put out a form, and then you send that you form link to whoever you want. So they would never know anybody else that's registered for it Correct. until they turned up. Correct. Unless you send it out to 300 people and put their email address in the two box <laughs> to everyone. Don't do yeah, it. Yeah. Um, so. Um, You'll notice here, so the tracking, it still says Richard, Caroline, Adrian. But if I go to attendance, I actually filled this in earlier. I logged in as a guy called Bailey Norton. Uh, so I can see here how many people have registered, how many people have cancelled, who registered and when. So it's quite a neat little tool. Um, so I'm just going to close that and I'm going to go back to. Uh, I'm going to go create an ordinary meeting now because uh, mostly, let's be honest, most meetings that people attend are not webinars. But I think that's fair to say, right? <laughs> yeah. So, good. Uh, fairly straightforward meeting. I'm going to put it then. Um, you can add it to channels. Um, again, I don't see that get used a lot, but if you wanted to relate a particular meeting to a particular channel, so if you had an event, say, and you had a channel for that event, yeah, you can link them together like that, but I don't see it used a lot. That will have the effect of making the meeting visible to everybody who is in that team as well, which you may not always want. Um, and of course, you've got repeating options if you wanted to say, you know, every Friday, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to send that now. Now, so. Caroline and Adrian will be receiving emails inviting them to this meeting and it would have popped up in their team's calendar. There's now stuff that I can do with this. So you'll notice a few extra tabs have come in. Meeting notes, whiteboard, and I've got an attendance report for it as well. Um, I won't get the attendance report until the end of the meeting. Obviously, an attendance report on a meeting that hasn't happened yet doesn't make any sense, um, but it's it's just shows you who joined when and, and what have you. So the meeting notes is a bit more interesting. So you can go in. It's a bit like if you've ever edited Wikipedia. It's that kind of thing. I, I don't know, that know how many people would have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think a surprising number of people have, but I'm willing to bet probably not a lot of people on this webinar. Um, so basically you just you have a section that you can see call it notes and you've got a text editor so you can just sit during the meeting. Uh, and you can just take your notes as the meeting goes. That's, uh, isn't it? Because usually it's like, um, well, I'm awful for it, sort of noting stuff down in my notebook 
and then no one else can see it. No one else can see it. <laughs> and, and actually, probably most people have been writing stuff down in separate places. Yeah. So it, I think it kind of helps with a bit of meeting etiquette as well, because you can kind of assign one person to write the meeting notes at the beginning oh. of the meeting, which is what we try and do at Select Technology. It doesn't always happen. But... We do forget. We do it. We make many <laughs> attempts. <laughs> um, that has just uh, weirdly uh, locked that up. I don't know why. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can do various things. Um, you know, highlight bits, you know, capture particular quotes from the meeting, uh, all this kind of stuff. You've got, you know, I'm not going to go through it hugely. It's rich text editing. We know how to do rich text editing, right? I, I would say the main thing about this that's really good is if you're having a recurring meeting, yes. then it means that you can, you know, sequentially add your notes. So then you're able to, oh gosh, what did we talk about last week? Can't really remember. And you can refer back really easily. The amount of times I've been in a meeting, I'm like, oh God, I can't find my notes from the last meeting. Or So it's just great that it integrates it all together. Exactly. It, yeah, and I can't find my notes from the meeting. Well, I'll just go to the meeting because that's where they are. Yeah. You know, it, it's like if you know where the meeting is, then you know, if you don't know that, then well, then you can find it in the search bar, to be, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so, um, yeah, so that's that. I, I'm not going to linger too long on that, but rich text editing is quite good. Tables, quotes, hyperlinks, horizontal lines for separating things. And I quite like the fact that you can add these sections so that you can, you know, have maybe you go marketing, operations, finance, you know, that kind of thing, sort of headings for the bits of the meeting. Whiteboard is quite good fun. I don't know if. Uh, if you guys have actually uh, started the meeting yet, but no, you probably haven't. So the whiteboard allows people in real time to collaborate uh, and create a whiteboard. It is what it says on the proverbial tin. So you can um, drag stuff around. Uh, you can say, OK, I want a, a pink note there. And I want a Blue note there, it's getting a bit gendered, isn't it? So let's have a green one to avoid that perception. Um, so you can, um, you know, collaborate on things, draw lines, select stuff and delete it and uh, turn it into a picture or a shape, convert to shapes and all sorts of stuff. You see there are these reactions that are coming up. So if I'm writing, so there's a text option, there's inking if you've got um, uh like a surface <laughs> so you can do this on an ipad and you can just just write straight onto it like that which is kind of what i've done here shapes images you can you can drag images up from your pc and there are there you go. Right here. yes with the weird mixed color pen thing um <laughs> there's also templates so if you've got particular things that you want to do like workshops what sort of team alignment workshop or brainstorming workshop um project planning the uh, daily stand-up meeting for example i'm just going to overwrite all of that with a template for that um and then you can uh, alton alton scrub wheel scroll by the way alton mouse wheel scroll will zoom in and out you can go through here you know drag stuff around and so it's a really dynamic tool we've used it internally as you guys will know for some of our strategy planning uh, but since then it has been uh, extended with all of these templates and um, features uh, so i quite like it you can also add documents in uh, if, if you want to like mm -hmm. this that's going to find documents in uh, in the uh, SharePoint. Uh, what, how would of, you add uh, the documents though? What are you going to then do with them in Whiteboard? Well, it's a way of sharing them really. So, um, right, okay. see if I've got any documents. I'm, trying I'm to just work. thinking, would it be like annotating them or something? Uh, I'm trying to remember where <laughs> I put my documents. I'm not going to linger too long on this because I'm concerned that I'm going to take up too much time. But, um, uh, Webinar resources. No, ah, there you go. Look, something went wrong. Uh, I think I've deleted that site. 
you can drop them in and then people it basically it puts them as an attachment and then people can open them up and, and react to them and what have you um and people can having opened them up can then co-author on them so you've got multiple people updating the documents and all that sort of stuff so that's quite good and then even better uh is um there's a couple of things that i think are really quite powerful. So one is forms. Oh, look at this. They're even next to each other at the top. So one is forms, the other is Q&A. So we have a Q&A function here. No, I've done that in the wrong order. We have a Q&A function here in uh, the webinar, which she explained at the top of the meeting. So you can um, ask questions. They sit in a Q&A function and um, they can then be curated. You can choose to respond to them. You can choose to ignore them. You can uh, publish them out, etc. So, and then you've got choices here. So, this is for an ordinary meeting. So, for example, uh, we have every two weeks we have an all company update on a Wednesday morning. Um, we could add this function to that all company update meeting and it would allow people to put their questions in, not just during the meeting, but in advance so that people know what questions they're likely to be asked. And then you've got to, do we want to allow people to moderate or do we just allow people to publish their questions? Now, if it's an internal only meeting, probably don't want to moderate unless it's something very specific that you're, uh, you're talking about. So we can save and you'll see that will appear here. Dun -dun 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 -dun, and then we've got no questions as yet, but uh, 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 you, you know, it's got spell check in it as well, so that's good. Uh, and you can, you know, ooh, 2002. We don't need a plan for 2002, do we? Um, and then we can, uh, you know, uh, add those questions. People can like them. And at the moment, anyone can, because we haven't got the moderator on, anyone can then comment on those questions. And so you can start having a sort of question and answer discussion around the subject that the meeting is in before the meeting happens and during uh, and indeed after you know you can keep the conversation going afterwards as well in a structured way um, <coughs> and the last bit on meetings that I'm going to talk about is forms so when you put forms into meetings it's not going to create completely customizable forms as if you're familiar with Microsoft Forms elsewhere you'll see it calls it polls where I think this is useful is uh, if you've got, um, so you've got a multiple choice poll. So say you've got a decision you know you're going to need to make in that meeting. Right? So we'll say, uh, we'll just call it decision one. And we'll say we've got plan A, which is going to be presented by the, uh, the team and plan B and then plan C. Plan C. Uh, we don't allow people to have multiple answers. We're trying to make a decision here, so we're not going to make multiple answers. Could do if we wanted to. Save as draft. Uh, and then this is not available yet, so I could just review this and go, so decision one, are we going A, B or C? Yes, that is what I wanted. Fine, you'll see I can either edit that, I can delete it, or I can launch it. Now, having launched it, it's now possible for Caroline and Adrian to come in to the meeting uh, and express their views and I personally think that plan A is probably the best way to go so I'm going to say submit there and you can see I've got a response and at the moment it's 100% on that so it's quite good for uh, as I say for making decisions like that oh let's see sorry my uh, so <laughs> I will go with plan C uh, so um, it's quite good for making decisions in the meeting I, it's also quite good for um, could, because you can make these available as I have done here. You can make them available before the meeting starts um, and it's quite cool for you know social stuff as well. You know, should we go bowling or should we go, you know, all that kind of conversation? Um, I quite like it. And there are other types of poll. Uh, it might be quite good for like dates as well. So if you're all trying to find a date that works best for everyone. Yep. Um, you can kind of put a few different options rather than having to search through everyone's calendars. Exactly. Now you've got two other types here. Multiple choice. Now this is um, if you want to build a quiz. So if you're doing like a training or a, a new service rollout or 
I don't know what it might be, but you you know you want to confirm that by the end of the meeting, the people who attended the meeting have understood what you've told them. You mm. can give them a quiz, and you can launch that because we've got uh, check that people were listening. We could do yeah. one at the end of our webinar. <laughs> yeah, you could. I'm not. I'm not going to. Uh, but you'll see also. <laughs> you won't be tested. <laughs> <laughs> there's you'll see there's AI involved here. So because I put what day is it? It's saying, OK, well, these are the likely options that you're going to want. And do I want to just add all? Yes. Yes, I do. Do I want to allow multiple answers? No. And then again, save as draft. Oh, and I'm going to mark what is the correct answer. So yes. So um, uh, it seems so obvious I forgot to do that bit. So I can save that as draft again uh, and it will load it into here. And if I just launch that, if I now come along and say, I think it's Monday, and press submit it'll say no no it's not monday but it, and it will tell people what the correct answer is uh so that's quite good and the other <laughs> type which sorry wrong one create new is word cloud so this is if you just want to gather a uh uh a kind of a sentiment um that's not a very that's a closed question so it wouldn't be a very good one um but um Again, you can save and launch and it will display responses as a as a word cloud. So uh, I just ask uh, uh, one of you to say blue in your answer and one of you to say red and it will, you'll get to see uh, with time as, as things uh, go. So you see there it's just it's gone. Oh, there's a there's an important word. So it finds nouns. Uh, and it starts to build a, a cloud of. Um, uh, yeah, there you go. See, so I said one of you say blue and one of you say red. It was a simple instruction anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so um, and you get the idea and over time as you get all your responses in with lots of words. Uh, yes, you, you start to get. Uh, you get to you start to build a, a sort of sense of the things that people are saying. It takes a bit for the ego. Uh, it pulls out the uh, the key phrases. So that is everything with teams. Unless sorry, not with teams, with meetings. To, uh, unless there's anything else you want me to draw out before I move on to the Viva part. I, I think um, I'm good. I mean, obviously, if there's any questions that come up, we'll fire them at you. But yeah, I'd I'd say move on to Viva. Marvellous. So Viva Insights, here it is. Look, if you haven't got it already, go on the three dots. You will have just search for Viva and Viva Insights will come up. Once you've found it, uh, if you uh, right click, uh, if I unpin that, I'll go through the whole process. There you go, Viva Insights. Go to that, right click, pin. Now what Viva Insights does is it has a look at how you're working and it offers you suggestions on how to um, uh, connect with people and to book focus time. As I said at the top, it's driven by AI using data. This is a test environment. I can't show you this screen from my real environment because it will be, uh, I don't mind you seeing my working hours, but this page is full of customer details, so I can't really show you that. But um, you'll get the idea. So what the Stay Connected does, uh, you may not hear, it might not load it at all, but what the Stay Connected does is it finds uh, key language, so uh, anything imperative, interrogative, basically. So um, if you say, I need you to do this, that's an imperative. It will find it, whether it's in an email or a team chat. It will say, you said, you said to Tess, I need you to finish the marketing plan. Ha has she done that? You know, uh, and particularly if you put a, a phrase on it like, I need you to finish the marketing plan by Friday, then it will actually bring it up and surface it at the right time as well and say, well, it's Friday now, has she done it? You might argue maybe you should surface it on Thursday, but um, it's a useful reminder of the stuff that's been done. Equally, can you do, it will find that, and, and inbound as well. So people using that language towards you, can you do this? Is this available? Asking questions, all that kind of stuff. That's what goes into the Stay Connected tab. And it highlights it up and you get a choice to go when well, I've done that. This isn't really a task which it uses to learn to improve how it does things and um, add it to my to do list if you want to do that as well. And then the focus time uh, is about booking time in to uh, 
to stop people just ringing to focus. And, uh, <laughs> to focus yeah so it's booking time to focus thank you um and principally it's it's about stopping people blocking out your calendar now of course all your colleagues could probably see that it says focus time and they'll just book over it but if like me you've got a bookings calendar this is quite good because you can say oh i don't i don't want to take anyone taking that time in that slot and it's good just have a reminder just say to your mind say yeah come on let's focus and this interestingly um is Microsoft's way of encouraging to spend less time interacting with Microsoft stuff. They want you off Teams. This is about well-being. Put it down. Stop. Stop feeling like you have to be in meetings all the time. Put it down. Focus on your job. Focus on what it is you need to do. Or indeed, go and have a lunch. Go and go for a walk. Look at the outside world uh, and so on. So Viva Insights, that's about as much as I'm, I'm going to go into with that. It's quite useful uh, particularly the ones have that i can't show you <laughs> that's the bit that i, I spend most of my time in in viva insights but uh i can't uh uh I, nice try i think that might not come up quickly enough in the course of this meeting but we'll see so uh viva learning viva learning is uh yeah, it's what it sounds like so it's it's a, a way of um managing your own development and, and career. So you can start. So this is connected by default to LinkedIn Learning. Note that most of the content on LinkedIn Learning requires a subscription. There is some free stuff, but a lot of it requires a subscription. And Microsoft Learn, which is all uh, free. And you can set this up. This is without buying any additional licenses. You can set this up so you can create a SharePoint site where you put resources in and then you say uh, this is these are our um, internal resources that we want people to learn about. And that can be policies, uh, you know, health and safety, whatever it might be. Um, so I, if I said I wanted to learn about Power Apps, for example, I can do a search and it will find me courses on Power Apps. And say, oh, actually, you know what? That does look quite interesting. And then LinkedIn Learning, but you know, I'm going to bookmark it. And actually, I can go direct to the course here from that link. Cool. I think you said that you can integrate your own um, training, like if if you offer certain training courses within your yeah. own. So we've built a little bit of that okay. here. So if I said, because uh, we've used the two minute tutorials, uh, remind me of the subject of any other two minute tutorials? Uh, saving messages in Teams. Ah, there we go. No matches found. That's uh... um, breakout rooms. Oh no, I don't think we've done breakout. Have we done, have we breakout? done breakout rooms yet? No, not yet. Found other things about breakout rooms, including oh. blue jeans. Interestingly, um, done loads, and I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is because some of this stuff is also available in chats. You've got a button here in a chat so that part there is about kind of sorry that part there is about looking at your own training and keeping track of it in chat it's about suggesting it to somebody else so um the system administrator which was also me as it but the system administrator sent richard thompson a hey i think you should do this course so that could be quite good if you're a line manager and you want all of your um direct reports to maybe do a training course on something yeah, but also sideways, you know, I don't think uh, you shouldn't limit it to um, line management. So you because you okay. can send it to anyone. So if, if I've done a course and I think, hey, that was a really good course and it would be great for Jig, I can just send it across. Yeah, yeah. You know? uh, so I'm going to go Adrian. Uh, and then I'm going to add Caroline as well. Group chats. Don't forget about the power of group chats. Uh, and add that and then in, in my Viva learning I'm going to say power apps uh, there you go I think you need to know about the AI builder guys I think that would be really useful for you Ooh. so I can send that over and we can have a conversation about why because we've got the full chat capability now uh, also in here um, I'm going to see if it will find the internal content. It did the other day. <laughs> One of our customers will be able to testify that this worked the other day. Um, 
there's a limit on the content that we put in. It's not finding it. Uh, so, but basically, you you put in content which is uh, specific to your business, videos, PowerPoint files, and um, Word files, uh, and you, it, it gives you this same experience. That's brilliant. That's right. So that means if we have like I don't know a training deck for how to use I don't know our intranet or something, we could put that on there, and then when we've got a new starter, we can sort of share it with them that way. Yeah, exactly that. And um, I think it may be that I haven't got permissions, but you can see here that the, uh, that one is an example. So the Microsoft Stream uploading um that was uh, an internal thing and i can then uh click on that it takes me to my um, conscious of time nick yeah and i can run through that so uh, anything else you want to go through today? I want to do, there's also in the chat window so that's very good uh is the live components which i have not enabled in this tenant so what i'm going to do is quickly start uh teams chat with the two of you for real as it were uh he says bear with me one second so live components is about um uh collaborating isn't it so it's like sort of collaborating within your team's chat on exactly so in different um, ways so here is the team chat that we have amongst us with lots of pictures of my dog on, on my desk and so <laughs> I can uh, go to here and I can say right okay I want a paragraph and I can start writing this paragraph here uh, and then you guys can come in and, and co-author that now uh, demo and then I can publish that into there and we can co-author from there and what that means is that while I'm writing to say that and you can see Jigs in there, Tess is in there writing other things at the same time and I can also skip out into the original that won't work there because that's the wrong tenant I can skip out into the original file in fact this is a live, this is the agenda for this session and it's a live component, but I can skip to here. See the live component outside of um, Teams as well. So I can create it in Teams and then look at it elsewhere, he says. Try that. There you go, that's going to do it. This is the trouble of running uh, multiple tenants all at the same time, you get, start falling over each other. So I can now make changes here. Uh, and then if I go back to Teams, uh, you can see it's all there. There are various different types of live component. We've got checklists, bulleted lists, numbered lists, paragraphs tables and task lists so i'm just going to do a quick task list these ones are really useful i think they are um so if i go to here and i say this one is for tests uh by 28th of february and this one is for jig oops jig i seem to be shouting uh by third and I'll do one for me uh, by the first and hit go and the reason I've done that one for me is because I've stopped out looking I will get an email uh, that will uh, basically tell me you've just been uh, assigned a task so even if um, even if you're uh, you're not in the conversation, it's not there. And obviously, if you get assigned something, uh, you do get notified. You get a, oh dear, Outlook's refusing to connect. That's good, isn't it? We'll believe you. Trust me. You get a nice notification, and it um, 
uh, yeah, it just uh, alerts you. So that is, uh, I think, quite a quite a nice function. Um, and right, so oh, saved messages, saved messages. Yes, that was the one last thing that I wanted to talk about today. I'm aware of time, so chat. Uh, if I've received a message here. Um, we have actually done a two minute tutorial on this, so we have. So I can just go check save out, the message. Check that out. Indeed. Um, so I can save that message and then from here. Uh, oh, maybe this is one part that isn't quite there or is it in? There you go, saved. So you click on your face as it were, hit saved, it will take you to saved. And so if you have messages that you want to hold on to for any extended period of time, you can access them there like that. Three things that are coming soon and then I'm done. One is quiet time, so you'll be able to tell teams I only work from eight or six, whatever it is you work or whatever you're willing to receive notifications. If you've got teams on your mobile outside of those hours, it won't set the notification off and you know, ping at you. Uh, number two, that uh, pinned messages, you know, a bit like in, in Twitter, you can say here's my pinned tweet and it was always sits at the top. You'll be able to do that in Teams channels. And the last thing is walkie talkie, which will essentially be so if you're in a team and you, you're in a particular channel in the team, there's going to be a button at the top that says walkie talkie. To, it allows you to essentially real time. It's not a recording. It's not like WhatsApp where you record a voice message and send it. It's real time. You press it and you can talk to everybody in that team. You can turn that on or off. You'll be delighted. That's going to gonna really um, mess with people, isn't it? You just send a but... jig talking to you through your screen. And you're like, oh. <laughs> yes, but if you think, yeah, of, uh, I mean, for example, if you've got a team of drivers that are driving around or if you're an event management company and you're yeah, you've got people yeah. all over a venue setting stuff up or, in a, you know, we use a similar function in uh, service desk so that when people are, oh, what's this for? And particularly with everybody working remotely now, if you've got a team of four or five people, the walkie talkie allows you to talk to the whole team all at once and have a conversation like that and so on. And cool. uh, that's it. That's great. Um, and um, it sounds like there's lots more coming as well. It, I, I feel like they've kind of made Teams their, you know, it's one of their main focuses really since, as you said, the, the two years ago when it kind of all kicked off um, and everything's been kind of speeded up. So we have all the great stuff sooner rather than later. Um, I, I suspect just, that in about in yeah. a couple of years, it might be difficult mm -hmm. to tell the difference between Teams and Windows, to be honest. I think they're bundling everything into it. It seems that way, doesn't it? And like the, the sort of traditional Outlook email will kind of, you know, become less and less uh, a, a daily usage, kind of be more, like you say, for formal things or... Um, or for clients, external people. So, um, yeah, no, it's great. Thank you so much, Nick. And thanks to everyone that joined us. Um, if you do have any questions, I think Jig put all of our details. Um, oh, there they are up on the screen. So you can easily get in touch with us. Um, if you can't remember those, you can find us on LinkedIn, um, on our website, the contact us form if you've got any questions and you can watch this back again if you felt like you missed anything or you want to go over anything and um, you can re-watch so it should be up and live soon and um, thanks to everyone for watching and thank you nick and thanks to jig as well we look forward to seeing you all soon <laughs>